Hello there, my name is Dan and the main purpose of my channel is to show you how to grow your own fruit and vegetables no matter what size garden, allotment or growing space you do indeed have or the amount of time you have available to dedicate to your gardening. Over the last few years I've been working on a partial self-sufficiency project here in Essex UK and I'd love to show you how to do the same. So if you like my work please feel free to like and share and if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I'm going to put up please feel free to subscribe and click the bell. Today's video is going to be why get a polytunnel or a greenhouse. I have made several videos on polytunnels now covering subjects as how to construct them, how to make frames on the bases and how to stop polytunnels from blowing away. So those videos will be linked below and check those out if you wish. I chose polytunnels over greenhouses for the following reasons. The first reason is safety. So if you've got children or animals, a polytunnel over a greenhouse could be a good idea. Although now you can get perspex greenhouses. So that could be an option for you. Another option is generally polytunnels are cheaper than greenhouses, particularly if you are buying them new. Although sometimes you can look around and actually find greenhouses for free if you're willing to take them down for the owner who wants rid of them. Another reason is in general they are easier to put up and another reason is if one is expecting to move or indeed ends up moving at a later date a polytunnel is generally easier to disassemble and put up in another location than a greenhouse would be. A great reason also to favour a polytunnel over a greenhouse is the fact that a polytunnel can sit on an uneven surface much easier than a greenhouse can, where which generally you would have to level the surface first before you put it up, whereas a polytunnel can accommodate it to a degree. This polytunnel is a Feel Good UK polytunnel. It's six metres long and three metres wide and 230 metres from ground to top. In Imperial, that is 19 feet 8 inches long, 9 feet 11 inches wide and 7 feet 6 inches high. I recommend very much people go for the hinged door like this when purchasing a polytunnel because it's less likely to break than say the zip doors which can be prone to ripping. This is also a feel good UK polytunnel three meters long and two meters wide, 210 centimeters high. In Imperial, that is nine feet, 11 inches long, six feet, seven inches wide, and six feet, 10 inches high. Reasons to get a polytunnel or a greenhouse then? Well, the first reason will be because you can generally expect to get crops up to a month or so early if you grow them in a polytunnel or a greenhouse. A great example of this could be strawberries, where which you can have the plants in the polytunnel or a greenhouse and they will be ready generally quicker than they would be had you had them growing outside. Frost protection. You can see here I have a blood orange tree here that is carrying a crop. Now I overwintered this blood orange tree in my other polytunnel last winter and all I did was put an additional plastic cover over the top of it during periods of heavy frost. Other than that I gave it no other protection than leaving it in the polytunnel and it came through well. You can protect crops from wind and the rain and animals, things like that. For example, some of you may be aware that I grew some sweet corn in this polytunnel. That could be very beneficial because some people can't grow crops like sweet corn where they live. Maybe the weather is too strong so damages it or maybe there's deer that can run through and also destroy or damage it. So protection for your crops is also a great factor of growing in a polytunnel or a greenhouse. A great example of protection given by a polytunnel is on these blueberries. So what I will do is leave them in here whilst they are fruiting so the birds do not eat the fruit. By growing in a polytunnel or a greenhouse you can keep your plants producing later in the growing season. For example you can see these spinach plants here. They are still producing well as are these kale plants here. I also have spinach, kale, chard and rocket growing in these containers here and this container I set yesterday with some cabbage and also some more kale. So the extension of the growing season is one of the great factors of growing in a polytunnel or a greenhouse. 
if you were growing a variety of perpetual strawberries, you could potentially also longer the season the other end. So you could be growing your own strawberries later into the colder months than if you were growing them outside. By utilising a polytunnel or a greenhouse, you are more likely to be able to achieve all year food production by utilising the microclimate that they do provide. You can further utilise the microclimate principle by doing things such as this. You can see I'm growing these lettuces in these polystyrene containers. Now yesterday I harvested some dwarf beans from these containers, removed the plants and reset them with these winter lettuce plants. And all being well, the extra warmth provided to the roots by the insulation of these containers should help these to produce good quality yields. Polytunnels or greenhouses allow you to do all weather gardening and I think this is brilliant. If you want to do some gardening but you are unable to get into your garden, you can come out into your polytunnel or your greenhouse, do some potting on, do some tidying up, do some planning. Even if you don't want to do any physical gardening but you just want to walk around and have a look at some plants, you can come out into your polytunnel or your greenhouse and do that even if the weather outside would not allow you to do that if you were just walking around your garden or your allotment disease protection. For example, I grow this peach tree in the polytunnel because it protects it from winter rainfall, which can avoid peach leaf curl. I sometimes get asked the question, do green polytunnels let enough light in for crops? Well, I can say comfortably that I produce good crops of peaches and I've also grown melons also in green polytunnels with great success. So believe what you wish on this subject. It's generally advised to set a polytunnel north to south, but this is actually set east to west. So if you don't have the ideal place to set a polytunnel, make the best of what you've got if you wish to take advantage of the microclimate they provide. Regarding disease and bird protection, I'm growing strawberries and blueberries in this polytunnel. By stopping rainfall getting on strawberries, you can help to prevent certain diseases which are made worse by wet weather. And once again with the blueberries, unless a bird gets in from an open door, then a bird can't get in to decimate the crop. A good feature of some polytunnels and greenhouses is they have guttering or flaps such as this here which can help to harvest rainwater. So I've got the bucket under here and when it rains and if you think about just how much of a surface area this is, how much rain will fall along there, then drips down into the guttering and then goes into the bucket. So it can be very beneficial for the harvesting of rainwater. On the subject of disease prevention, hot and humid environments such as those found in some polytunnels and greenhouses can be good for the spread of disease. So you can see we've got vents here on this polytunnel and this is brilliant for helping to keep a polytunnel better ventilated. You can also find windows, vents, etc. on certain greenhouses. Leaving the door open on very hot days can also be beneficial. In greenhouses, blinds can also be hung up to help stop the polytunnel from overheating and also some of the glass can also be painted. Aesthetics need to be considered for some people. For example, some people may not want a polytunnel in their garden, which is fair enough. So one may wish to opt for a nicely designed greenhouse. You can get some lovely ones, Victorian style ones, orangeries, and they can look really, really lovely. But of course that's up to you and something to be considered when you are thinking about a polytunnel or a greenhouse. The frame of this polytunnel is galvanized, so this will help to prevent rust to help the polytunnel last longer. Regarding durability, you sometimes see greenhouses in people's gardens which have been there for years. The stainless steel ones, for example, or the galvanized ones. Another example would be a wooden one that someone's looked after well by treating it every year so it doesn't rot and last longer. Now, with regards to a polytunnel, the supports should last a fair amount of time, but generally every five years or so, give or take a few years, the cover may need replacing. More often, of course, if it gets damaged or something like that. Discussing cost. 
The poly tunnel behind me, the six meter by three meter one, I estimate cost me about 400 to 450 pounds. That was for the frame, the cover, and also the groundwork I used to secure it to the ground. I also took some time off work in order to do it. The three meter by two meter poly tunnel, I would estimate was probably about 200 pounds, including the frame, the cover, and the way I secured it to the ground. So look at those videos and you can see how I went about doing it and you've got to weigh up the costs okay so the cost of the materials and the labor time etc poly tunnels are very important for food production I have read that 80% of soft fruit grown in the UK is grown in poly tunnels if anyone out there knows this is true please feel free to comment down below Commercially, fruits such as cherries are often grown in poly tunnels to provide bird protection and protection from the weather. Also, picking can be done in less than favorable weather, so this can be very helpful for food production and food security. Some of you may be saying you would love a greenhouse or a poly tunnel, but you don't have the space and or the means in order to have one. Well, you could consider a cold frame or a mini greenhouse. People grow things like strawberries, tomatoes, chilies, cucumbers in these, so many things. Even though they're smaller than a greenhouse or a poly tunnel, you can still get the benefit of the microclimate. You can use them to extend the season either direction. So if you really want one, have a look about. There are so many options available to you. You could even consider making your own out of wood. And then you could get some perspex, put it on and build your own mini greenhouse or cold frame. Watering needs to be considered. I water with a watering can with water ideally from a water butt. Water can also be delivered by pipe. Commercially, irrigation systems are set up for regular watering to produce the best possible crops. So many avenues of gardening can be opened up to you by utilizing growing certain things undercover. For example, certain varieties of grapes, if grown in a climate such as the UK, are advised to be grown undercover. Also, with regards to using polytunnels and greenhouses, heating systems can be employed so that you can really extend the growing season. You've got to weigh up the cost to benefit ratio in these regards, but it's certainly all things to be considered. This concludes why I get a greenhouse or a polytunnel. So if you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And you can always check me out on Dan underscore Home Gardens. If you're interested, thank you for viewing. See you next time.